Hey, Daddy, maybe there's someone here. I found a corner. Maybe there's more in here. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. $35, we can sink the Bismarck. Hey, I'm Mark. That was my son, Charlie. And this is the Battle of the Denmark Strait for $35, where I'm gonna show you how you can put together an epic World War II miniature naval game the money you probably have sitting around the house. Now, the Battle of Denmark Strait is well known because it included the German battleship Bismarck, which a lot of people, including many, many gamers that I talked to, consider a super ship. Now, was that true or not? I don't know, but the battle was pretty epic. So before I get into the nuts and bolts of how to put the game together, I thought I'd hop on Zoom with my good friend James. We talk about World War II a lot and talk about the Bismarck and why you want to do this battle. Hey everyone, this is my friend James. He's not a war gamer, but we love talking about World War II. We're trying sure. to start a World War II podcast. Um, anyways, James, we're talking about the Battle of Denmark Strait. Why should gamers do it? What's cool about it? Right. Right. Uh, because it has the German, famous German battleship Bismarck. Mm-hmm. Right. So what do you know? Do you know about the Bismarck? What do you, where, do you, where do you reference the Bismarck from? Uh, the movie, it was a 1960 movie with Dana Winter right. uh, called Sink the Bismarck. Not right. to give away the plot. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Name kind of says it all. Well, it leaves you hanging. You don't know if they do or not. I mean, unless you, you know, read a book. Right. The Bismarck was built. It was totally ready to go in 1941 in May. And then Hitler was thinking about invading Russia. <laughs> There's a smart move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Admiral Rader, the head of the Kriegsmarine, decided that if Germany invaded Russia, the Kriegsmarine would really get no more resources. So he wanted to convince Hitler that the Navy could prosecute the war against Britain while the army fought the Russians. Right. So he decides mm. that he's going to roll the dice, launch the Bismarck into the North Atlantic, get a stunning success and hit, convince Hitler to, to let the Navy uh, fight the war. Now, the Bismarck is ready to go. It's got its sea trials done. It's got a crew. It's ready to go. And he invites Hitler for an inspection. Hitler says, ah, my brand new battleship. He goes for the inspection. After the inspection, Raider tells him, mein Führer, the Bismarck is going to sail on the North Atlantic in just a couple days, which is kind of a shock to Hitler. Hitler didn't even know. I think it's, that's not really the guy you want to surprise. I think, you know, you're, you know. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> you have no background. Like, it's like, you're like, oh, uh, Adolf's kind of laid back. I mean, just, we're taking this giant battleship out, and uh, I, know you're, I know you're busy with the Russians, and so we're going to go do this. Hope that's not a big deal. <laughs> right. Bismarck decides to sail, and the Germans mm -hmm. have three options. And the, the trouble with the, for the Royal Navy is they have to cover all these approaches. Mm. So that's going to spread them kind of thin. Mm hmm. And ultimately, the Bismarck decides to sail far to the northwest through the Denmark Strait. And that is the area that the Hood and the Prince of Wales are trying to cover. And the issue for the British is that the Hood's deck has very little armor. And so if it wow. fights at long range, right, the Bismarck shells will kind of can come in and cause a lot of damage. So there's this dangerous period. Never happen. Just like a bit of that. <laughs> one in a million. One in a million. <laughs> not even. Not even an issue. Yeah. Maybe. So the, the the that's the trouble with the hood, right? Because when it's headed towards the Bismarck, right, it's only going to have the guns in its front that can shoot. Where the Bismarck is going to have all its guns shooting, right? Mm. And it has to get through this dangerous zone before it can then turn and fight. And historically, it's almost through mm. that zone. Looks like it's going to make it, and a shell gets through the deck and hits what's called the magazine, which is where all the ammunition is stored, and it sets off a massive Terrible. explosion which blows it up. And only three men survive from the hood. 
But, and after the hood sank, every ship in the Royal Navy that could set out after the Bismarck. And by sinking it, it changed the nature of the war in the Atlantic. Or is the moral that megalomaniac hothouse flyers are <laughs> terrible, terrible strategists? <laughs> That could be too. All right. Well, I'm off to talk to my friends about how they can war game this awesome battle. So now this is what we need to play our game. You're going to need miniatures, two six-sided dice, some splash markers, a game mat, and of course, a set of rules. Let's see if we can do it for $35 or less. The first thing we're going to talk about are the miniatures themselves. I suggest that you buy uh, Panzer Schiff's miniatures. It's 12400 scale. They're resin cast. They come in one piece, so there's no assembly required. Uh, they'll come in two different colors, Axis and Allied, so you don't really even have to paint them if you want. Uh, and they're, they're, they're good, right? They're not super detailed like uh, a GHQ miniature would be. It's another company. But they look really nice, they're indestructible, and you can get everything you need. Now here are the four ships you'll need for this. That's the Bismarck and the Prince Eugen. And there's the Hood and the Prince of Wales. Now I painted them up, I put them on a piece of wood with a little texture, and they look great. And the best part is that you can get all four miniatures with shipping for $29.50. So that, as you can see, is the majority of our budget right there. But we all love the minis, so why not spend your money there? Panzer Schiff's miniatures, check them out. They have an entire range of World War II, World War I, Spanish-American. Uh, very affordable and very good. Now, the next thing you're going to need are two dice. Okay, now we all have board games around the house, particularly Yahtzee. Now Yahtzee has a ton of six-sided dice. All you're gonna need are two six-sided dice. Daddy, you steal my dice again. Big no-no. Now you're also gonna need splash markers. Again, you can steal cotton balls for free. Now the next thing you're gonna spend your money on is the ocean. Right, which would be the game mat, and you have to take a field trip to your local fabric store. Now, they're gonna have lots of blue. Anything that you like that you think looks like water, you can check it out. But the key, right, is try to find something that's cheap. So you can hunt around, personally, I, maybe I'm a little geeky, but I love the hunt, going around, finding something that's affordable, and I think makes a good look for the ocean. So I found this here at 30% off. Great, shiny, it's got some texture, it looks like the ocean. $1.99 a yard on sale. Now for Fire at Sea, you're gonna have to put a grid. Let's talk about that. Right, and the grid are six inch squares. So you have your blue mat and you'll, you'll measure it this way. You measure it in six inch squares. Uh, and there's, you can mark it any way you want. A couple things you might have around the house. Again, keep this uh, no dollars is you might have these uh, reinforcement for three ring binder paper and they're white so you just peel them off and you just put them every six inches and you start to see a grid right if you don't want to do that uh, another way is you could use paint here's just some um, uh, craft paint we have around the house. You can really use any paint, even you know old house paint you have in the garage, anything. And you know you could use a pen. You don't even need a paintbrush. So what you can do is again when you're marking off your grid, you say six inches over from there. You take the pen, right, and you just put a lot of paint on the bottom, and you just mark it. The circle. There you go. And you could do one up here with your grid. There you go. No paintbrush required. The last thing you're going to need are a set of rules. When we were thinking about our $35 budget, the rules are where we hit a little bit of a brick wall. 
because most war game rules are going to be $35 by themselves and that leaves no other money to buy minis or anything else we need. So I thought, well, I'll write a set of rules and I'll give them to you for free. And that's where Fire at Sea came from. So you can go to my website, Fireball Forward, download them for free. Uh, if you've played my game Ruthless, the gunfight game, uh, this is similar in the sense that uh, they're fun, they're action-packed, there's not a lot of pages or rules, uh, and you can play several battles in an evening. Denmark Straits, you could play it as the Germans, then you could swap with your friend and play it as the British all in one evening. To review what you'll need for your $35 Battle of Denmark Strait game, you need your game map marked into a grid, you'll need your miniatures, two dice from Yahtzee or Monopoly, a handful of cotton balls, and your free set of rules. Well, now that you got your game, it's the best part. You get two of your good friends, come down to your game table, and you can sync the Bismarck. Uh, what? <laughs> That's right, sync the Bismarck. That's exactly what we're going to do. I think it's sync the hood. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right, so Sean is going to be the Hood and the Prince of Wales, the Royal Navy. Alex is the Kriegsmarine with the vaunted Bismarck and the Prince Eugen. And they've chosen the historical captains to fight the battle with. So, you guys ready? Ready we to go. go. All right, sink or not the Bismarck. <laughs> Okay, here's how we're going to set up the Battle of Denmark Strait. At the bottom of the board, we have the Prince of Wales following the hood, and they're moving to the right, which would be to the east. At the top of the board, we see the Bismarck following the Prince Eugen, and they're moving to the left, or what would be to the west. Now, to the right of the Prince Eugen and the Bismarck is the Greenland Ice Shelf, so they can't move at all to their right, and they're kind of pinned against that part of the board. You can see the board is laid out in our grid, and ships will move from grid square to grid square, basically one a turn. When you're shooting, the number of grids between the ships determines the range and how difficult or easy the shot is. So we're gonna get going and see if the Bismarck can repeat history and blow up the hood and be a super ship. Uh, to start, we're gonna go through the first turn a little bit slowly so that you can see how a turn works in Fire at Sea. And we're gonna get into it. Let's see what happens. German speed roll. 10? 10. Well, that's not good. Now having passed its speed roll, the German ships can move one space. And Alex decides to move closer to the British to decrease the range. Oh, we just want to crush them. <laughs> yeah, British speed roll. All right, here we go. Good enough, we're speed five. So I'm gonna move one forward left. The Hood and the Prince of Wales take up the challenge and Sean closes with the Germans even more. Okay, the Hood is gonna shoot the Bismarck. Of course. And my base shooting is five, so I think it's five, six, seven, eight, is that right? Use captain points to increase my shot, I will. Make that a plus one, so I need a Seven. Oh, oh failed. No, nope. oh, that's man. too bad. That that's a miss. Uh, and um, the Prince of Wales is going to do the same thing. Ugh, yeah. missed by one both. That's not good. All right. The Bismarck will now explode the hood. So it shoots on a five. You hope. So it's five, six, seven, eight. With capital points, it goes to a seven. All right. And that's an eight. Oh, that's not good. The hood lucks out. The ace of hearts is a card that causes no damage. All right. Unfortunate. So now the uh, Prince Eugen will now shoot also at the hoods to an eight. And we get a oh. nine. So that's again These dice are unfair. Oh, the hood's luck has run out. An 8-inch shell penetrates into its engine room, slowing her down. Yeah, the Queen of Spades gets through with a uh, cruiser shot, so... That's a speed hit. It's on the hood. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. So now we go into um, oh. repair damage. Phase. And morale checks, unfortunately. And morale check, right. The Hood's crew gets a chance to repair the engine damage. Can they do it? I have uh, one captain point and the base roll is a 10, so I need a 9. Okay. See what we get. A 9. nine. Fixed it. Having repaired the engines, Sean must check to see if the Hood's crew will stay in the fight. Stiff upper lip and all that. I need a 5 or better. You passed. Seven. passed. All right. All right. All right. That's, all right, it. So that's the turn. end of the turn. Both sides continue to close the distance and engage in a close-range slugfest. Will it favor the British or the Germans? All right. All right. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can hit him this time. Come on, boys. All right. That's a hit. Oh, shells from both the Hood and the Prince of Wales hit the Bismarck, damaging a turret and blowing off its fire control radars. All right. All right. Good shooting. Are you done? I am. All right then. Now I Let's see if you run away. And I also <laughs> add a capital point for that. Ooh, Ooh. Alex fails the Bismarck's morale roll. Okay, the captain away. orders the Bismarck to disengage until he can rally. Our fearless leader is watching. <laughs> <laughs> the Bismarck pulls back, increasing the range in a desperate attempt to get out from under the British guns. Interestingly, the more lightly armored Prince Eugen maintains course and speed. The hood is going to turn to port. The British keep up the chase and press and the move Bismarck. On forward. Well, the Bismarck's finally getting some payback when one of its 15 inch shells penetrates the hood's engine room. I do want to try to fix that, and uh, I use all my captain points, so I have to just roll and see what I get. Yeah. 11, wow! Yeah, really wow, yeah, yeah, they're really on the ball today. Well, can the Bismarck's captain rally the crew and get her back in the fight? Alex must make a big roll here. And I got it. As, so he's back. As the Crank's Marine <laughs> should do. <laughs> Well, both sides have decided to square off again and continue pounding each other. Slipping to port. Well, in the reverse of history, the hood hits the Bismarck's magazine and threatens to blow her out of the water in one shot. Magazine hit, roll 2d6, um, 10 plus the ship explodes in a huge fireball. All right. Does the Bismarck explode from a magazine? We get to roll the big magazine dice. <laughs> the big dice. Right, Here they go. Here they go. A ten or more. The Bismarck explodes. Oh! 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 Almost! Almost! Little puffs of smoke oh. coming up from the magazine. Okay, don't do that again. <laughs> Oh man, all right. And now I have to do a morale check with six against yeah. oh, just, just pass. Hang it in there. Oh, I'm going to move very far away. Well, Alex decides that the Bismarck needs to open up the range as the British are starting to win the gunfight. Forward and come to But here. the British keep up the pursuit and pummel the Bismarck, penetrating her hull and causing okay. massive damage. Nine of spades. Yep, that is a hull damage. Nine hull damage. Oh. Ooh. And morale check. Get the point. Uh-oh. Ooh, that would be a runaway. Failed morale once again. The captain. Where's the captain? Anybody see the captain? <laughs> oh. He's hiding in, the captain? hiding in his quarter. Tell us their captain. It's looking grim for the Bismarck, but a minor hit on the Prince of Wales causes her to take a morale check. So I got hit, and so he needs a five. Oh! Give him a fail. Oh! The Prince of Wales has to run away, so I guess he's going to go to here. Yeah. He's running away. Come on! Oh, oh, oh. They're still oh, oh. 
something in there. Oh. Punches through. Oh. Twelve hull. Oh, the Prince of Wales just took a big hit to the hull. The Bismarck is not done yet. So I just need a morale check. He is a seven. Okay, come on, boys. Let's get it together. Yes. Barely. <laughs> wow, back in the fight. Well, Sean just caught a break. Perhaps the tide is turning against the Germans yet again. And move one. Turn to port and move one. All right, Bismarck. Shooting here. You're playing craps? Yeah. Nope. Nothing from the Germans today, thank you. Well, while the Bismarck is engaged in its death struggle, the Prince Eugen quietly slips away. Rolling for British move. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're moving. It's gonna go. So many chests. British battleships yeah. move in for the kill. We're gonna go. Man, the lifeboat. <laughs> All right. All right. See if we can put him away. That's a hit. All right, damage. Oh, oh no. no. And that oh, does it. The Bismarck starts to sink. In historical war gaming, doesn't mean that you're going to come out with the historical results. Sometimes you have to let the British win. <laughs> so. Well, there you have it. In our game, the Bismarck did not prevail. It was pummeled under the waves by the Prince of Wales and the Hood. So I think in my sense, the Bismarck was a very modern battleship, but it really was not a super ship. Uh, in the end, it was sunk by the Rodney and the King George V, right? Rodney being a very old ship. So I think the Bismarck was a very good modern ship for its time, but there were certainly a lot of other ships that came out in World War II that could give it a run for its money. So once again, the rules are free. Go to my website, fireballforward.com, download them, use them, play them, have a good time with them. If you really like it and you want more, I do have a scenario book for sale that has all the other battles of the Kriegsmarine. It's got a mini campaign for the Bismarck, all the battles that were fought up in the Arctic Circle, the early war battles at Narvik, the Graf Spee down the River Plate. So pick those up, support me writing more games, and I'll see you next time. No! There's still some! <laughs> and Hitler is thinking about invading Russia. There's a smart move. Yeah. <laughs>